This is what fits do to you when you catch the right one. You just start bleeding. And uh, That's how you know you're on the right pitch. That's pin. how you know. <laughs> nope. That he just felt big. Cinema! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and I want to break down a recent tournament that I took part in. It was a Wednesday night tournament. It's a little turkey shoot, 15 to 20 boats on average, but there's some real sticks that compete in this. It's hosted out of Lads Marina right there off of March Lane in Stockton, California. My buddy Vince Borges called me up. We had a river to sea shoot the next day. It didn't work out very well, so we're going to have to reshoot that. But he said, you know what, Nick? Come join me in this little tournament. Let's see if we can get it done. I had about two hours to think up a game plan. I didn't know what was in Vince's head. So the first thing I did as a professional angler and someone who's gonna really focus on trying to get the job done and not hope my way through it is bring up the conditions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the conditions, then I'm gonna break it down and see what the most dominant condition is and then tell you where I generally need to target what I'm actually looking for and how I think those conditions are going to affect the fish that I'm aiming for. So the first thing I did to track down my conditions was hop on my phone, get my weather pattern, my moon phase, my tides, and my ultraviolet. What this is going to better do is help me analyze each of those elements, each of those conditions, and figure out which one is more dominant than the next. In the delta, the tide means everything. It positions the fish. Um, it triggers the fish into feeding. It tells you how often they're going to feed, how fast they're going to feed, how tight they'll be to the bank, and how loose they'll be on outer grass lines, uh, depending on the speed and how high that tide will go. Um, from there, we have our other elements like the weather, the sun. The ultraviolet was eight. That's a pretty high ultraviolet. So that means during the middle of the day, this is a 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. tournament. So when we first get out there at 4 p.m., we still have a really high ultraviolet. They're going to be down deep in the grass. We're either going to have to punch for them. Uh, we're either going to have to throw over the top of the grass with some you know, frogs and try to call them up. Well, here's the thing. We had this plan in mind. But the weather was consistently cold each night. 30 to 35 degree drop. Also, we had a new moon. That's a black moon. Complete opposite of a full moon is the new moon. So, very little light at nighttime, extremely cold with 15 to 20 mile an hour wind on top of that temperature drop. So it was chilling the water. So a lot of the time with the new moon, you get that first light in the morning and you think the fish are gonna go right then, but the water is just so darn cold, the bass just weren't going. It was just too much of a drop for them since it's been warm consistently and then we had that cold trend. So what was going on is we had the idea that they were going to feed later in the day. And that was towards the top of our tide. So we saved our primary areas for later in the day. But the first thing I thought of when Vince called me, I said, you know what, man? I was on fish in Calaveras a couple weeks before then because the shad were in there. And a lot of the time when the fish get focused in on the shad, they are not overly concerned with the conditions too much because they're just consistently feeding because it's an easy opportunity. So we decided to run to the Calaveras, and with the water temperature consistently dropping, we searched out the shallower water towards the back near the riprap walls to try to find them in there. We threw a variety of baits and we're having a very tough time getting bit. We found a few small pods of shad, but that really wasn't what we were looking for. And until we got our first clue of the day, Vince picked up this River to Sea square bill. This is a biggie right here, the one Ish came out with. And this is a reaction bait. And first we were throwing it the conventional way, throwing it up current, bringing it down current. And that's how active, hungry bass will feed. You throw it up current, down current, it comes. That's a natural presentation. If you want to go 100% reaction presentation, you throw it the opposite direction because the bass are looking into that current, looking into that wind right here. It's a last second chance they turn and nail it. Well, since we couldn't get bit on a wacky rig Senko, believe it or not, and I seen Vince get cut and hook one up on this crankbait. Vince spills off right then. Well, maybe it's a reaction deal. Uh, this is Vince Borges of River to Sea. And so we thought, okay, reaction deal. So we started trying it around more in the back of Calaveras under the highway there. We really weren't getting the fish we wanted. So we decided to pick up and run out to the main river. It was a little bit early. The tide was, you know, 
probably about, still about an hour from being in the high tide. And so we ran over to the Pixley Slough area, East Disappointment and 14 Mile, that junction right there where they all meet. Well, we started throwing the square bills. The snot grass was just too thick under the grass. It was real close to the surface. We're getting hung up constantly. So we immediately started thinking, well, what's the best deal here? Well, we could throw a Texas rig worm, but we weren't getting a natural strike. We needed a reaction strike. Uh, we needed something pretty much weedless, something that excels in cold water. It was becoming now towards the end of the day, something that excels in low light. So good old Mr. Traditional Spinnerbait started coming into play. This isn't the exact spinnerbait I was throwing. I was throwing a tandem with a little Colorado right here and a gold willow like this one here. What that's doing in low light and especially in the Delta Gold's a hot color. And with the little Colorado blade instead of this willow I have right here, it put off extra noise. So Vince and I started working around. We got a couple of decent fish around the Disappointment Slough area. But we decided to go to another spot where Vince said, I know where some good fish are. We have about 45 minutes left in the day. So we went down this bank, fished it the conventional way, caught a small fish. And then I said, hey Vince, what about, let's just go 100% reaction deal and we'll throw the opposite direction to see if we can get them to go. Start going down that way, bam, Vince is right into a six pounder, just that quick. The tide's turning for us, it's coming up, the fish are right where we want them. Low light, a lot of wind, we couldn't even control anything else, so we used the spinner bait and we're burning them right over the top of that grass line to score that reaction strike. Um, we decided to come back up against it. The fish at the natural way, bring it down current, bring it downwind. Once again, nothing until we changed our position again and we started hooking up into them. The most crucial part that we ran into is that wind was up to around 15, 20 miles an hour. And any other position right there, we were fishing an island. And the reason why we chose this particular island is the wind direction and the current were traveling in the same direction. What this allowed us was better boat control and we can dictate where our baits are going and where more than likely the bass are facing so we can cover as many lanes of that water to score that reaction strike. When you're looking for a reaction strike, you can't take wide casts. The bass are not gonna track it down. Tight casts, we both had on spinner baits, parallel one another, coming down the bank. Bam, Vince is into a four, I hit another two. Uh, coming down to the wire, Vince sticks a, uh, I believe it was 7-3, and that was ended up being our big kicker fish for the night. But this all happened within the last 35 to 45 minutes, right in there. And what took place was, when we looked at this element, we said, oh, hi, ultraviolet day. So the fish really waited for that water to warm up. They waited for the top of the tide they waited for low light to where the other fish couldn't see them. Some came out and actively fed, and some strictly reacted. So it all came down to that last hour of the day where the water was just warm enough for them to feed. They didn't have much light on them so they can get out there and hunt, and they knew they were gonna have no light at nighttime to feed. It was that new moon. So they got in there and they executed right at the right time. Now yes, coming across big fish is lucky. You do have to have some luck involved in the fishing, but the thing is Vince knew this spot very well. He knew he's caught plenty of big fish there. It wasn't but a couple hundred yards from one of my big fish spot. So we had a good idea. This was an educated guess, but the thing is that we timed was that tide. We knew we were gonna hit our big fish area at the top of the tide at the last hour of the day to where they had low light because we had a high ultraviolet light um, day, but we couldn't get them punching. They were down in that thick stuff, but we just, couldn't get enough to hit, end up hitting one in the face to score that reaction strike. Uh, we couldn't get them to eat any natural baits like that. So the reaction was the deal. The square bill was unsuitable for the real thick grass. The spinner bait much more weedless. The gold imperative, it matches up with the golden shiner, shows up better in that stained water, that low light. It's a fantastic color out there in the spring and it ended up being a fantastic color out here in the summer. So the whole concept for us in the morning was to look for actively feeding fish that were on bait fish because we knew the elements were gonna make it tough that morning. We could not find that, but we did end up finding out that it was a 100% reaction deal. But when we went to our big fish spot, it would have been great to keep throwing the same bait that we found out we had a reaction deal on, but it was the wrong tool for the job because there was so much snot grass around there. So we had to use some more traditional 
weedless style spinner bait. And that's really what got the job done for us. Let me break into a couple more fine details here to better help you out on how we figured this out. Okay guys, let's take a quick commercial break and when we come back, I'll be getting back into more technique for you. Are you ready for a pair of polarized sunglasses that's gonna improve on your fishing game? Well, Bluefin Eyewear's addressed all the current issues with fishing glasses. No more pressure or discomfort behind the ears, they're super lightweight with improved face gripping technology, and not to mention a lifetime warranty. BluefinEyewear.com, guys. Check it out. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and when it comes to spooling up my reels, I choose nothing less than the best, and that's why I use P-Line each and every time. Are you fishing the best? Hey, Lion Baby. <laughs> Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. Thanks for watching guys. Now let's get back to the show. So let's go back to those conditions. How did we know at the, around the last hour of the day, more than likely our big fish were gonna bite? Is it just because it's a low light deal and bass feed better at twilight times? Well, sure they do. But let's take a look. We had a really, really cold night and a ton of wind. Water's getting real cold. We have that new moon, they have no light. It's hard for them to see. The water's cold. It's not easy for them to feed. That morning we start off, it's low tide. It's hard for us to get a good position on them. They're on those outer grass lines. Couldn't really get in there on them too well. The ultraviolet was extremely high. They can't hunt well on a high ultraviolet day. So what makes sense here? The ultraviolet is UVA light. UVA light's the same stuff that burns our skin. It's the same stuff that heats the bottom. The delta is very shallow, so it's going to heat back up substantially well throughout the day. So what was going on here? We wanted an active moving tide. We wanted to fish the top of the tide, okay? The top of the tide and the last transition hours around the tide. The, the hour before the bottom of the tide and the hour after the tide starts to come back in are great. Same thing at the top of the tide. Uh, the hour before it peaks and the hour before it goes out are always great. So we knew that hour just before the top of the tide was about 45 minutes before we were done for the day. It was check-in time. So we knew that high ultraviolet was going to be heating that water up to that prime time. Um, we knew the wind was going to be blowing into that island from looking at our wind direction. We knew the current was going to be pushing right up that same direction also into that island. Uh, we also knew that the lights were going to go back off on them. They were going to have a tough time hunting that night, so this is their opportunity. Bass are opportunist feeders. So everything right there, looking at those elements, the most dominant thing was cold. It wasn't the new moon, otherwise I would have been out there that morning. Because first light, right? Sure, they're going to go. But they were cold. Um, it was the bottom of the tide. It wasn't moving very fast. Not, easy not an easy opportunity for them to sit there on one of the brake lines and eat fish. Or eat bait or whatever swims by there. Not that easy for them. Um, to come out in the open because it's overcast. Well, we didn't have overcast. It was a high ultraviolet day. Not easy for them to see. They're lit up like a stop sign. Those fish can see them. So their single best opportunity from looking at these elements was the top of the tide, was low light when that ultraviolet backed off, was later in the day when that water was warmer, and just before they were gonna shut the lights back off on these fish. So we can clearly see that last hour of this tournament was our prime time, and we needed to move fast on our big fish spots and we needed a tool that matched those very conditions to where we can move through there effectively and not have to continuously clear grass off our baits. And that happened to be the spinner bait. 
Very useful tool. A lot of guys say, oh, it's an old timer's bait. That's an old school bait. And you may not often see it in Bass Masters or FLWs because guys still fish them in low light times. But a spinner bait is the best reaction bait you can ever use. The hooks are practically weedless. They're not like a square bill here. You can burn it right under the surface. It's got big hooks so you can get a deep hook set on the fish and you can hurry them to the boat. Not like a treble hook where you have to use a more limber rod without ripping those hooks free. So you can see right there, that was our prime time. We got lucky that our big fish were still there like we found them before, but you can see this is a calculated decision and this is how you have to execute in bass tournaments if you want to be quality guys. By all means, I respect the competition in there, so I was focusing as hard as I could and so was Vince to make sure we can place at the top to give these guys the respect they deserve for being great anglers. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. There we go. That's the way to get it done. Yeah, right it just there. happened. It just happened, right? It, it just happened in about 30 minutes. It just uh, that's all it takes, folks. We, we spent six hours when all we really needed was 30 minutes. I know you guys hear that don't give up stuff. And that's the God honest truth. You cannot give up. Don't that's give up. Fact. Keep that's chucking. We pulled keep in with chucking. four minutes to go. We kept chucking in yep. the darkness. So yep. keep on working. You'll get it done. That's it. That's all it takes.